Toyota Supra for a couple of days now and it's been a very weird experience because the, driving this car has actually made me angry angry is the word yeah. you know it sounds a bit odd but bear with me for a minute it's made me angry because, because I, before I drove this car of course I do my research and all this I read a lot about it like before so I know what the hell I'm talking about to the point that it actually hit the roads it was a lot of unnecessary uh, hate and I thought it was unfair I thought it was really unfair to level so much hate on the Supra because it really is a very nice car Where's the hit? No hit. So, 
unnecessary unnecessary you know the problem nowadays is keyboard warriors they hate everything they hate the world you know in the name of uh, in the words of a certain i can't remember his name but it's uh, batman's Thing. It's pretty cool. 
power, definitely no job. But I also have to say this, it's 2020, 300 odd horsepower, 75 horsepower, 500 meter per tour. It's not a big deal anymore. Okay? Mercedes A45 AMG.
Who am I kidding, lad? Take a closer look. I'm going to turn this thing around and uh, show you exactly what I like, what I don't like about this car, Toyota Supra. So this is it, right? Looks fantastic and all from far but as soon as you get up close you'll notice that there are things about it that are really not worth the 600,000 ringgit I think look at this door sill this is pure rubber it's nothing and as you can see this car is like about a year old already you can see the rubber is fading and then you move up front from the bonnet and it's the same thing. This would have been better as ventilation point or air extractors, whatever you call it. That doesn't look too cool. And then you move up front some more and you get the same stuff over here. Here. Over here. Here as well same stuff look at this it's really feeling right which is a bit sad actually but the rear though the back of the car now that looks really cool I think the best part of I'm not really an ass person don't get me wrong yeah but the, the Supra the best part about it is the rear I think it's so many gorgeous lines. Look at the tail. Look at the spoiler. It's really cool. 
right? This is the LFA style fog lamps I was talking about. This look like they belong in the Nurburgring 24 hours. You can see immediately already that this car is built to race. Oh look, you have some things, some of that cheap rubber over here as well. I think the wheels look really good. The wheels are really cool. But then again, this is a Toyota Supra, right? If you go back, as I said earlier, if you go back through the history books, this is a car that was designed from the get-go to be modified. So, as uncool as those rubber extractors are, well, if I want to, if you can call them extractors, but they're there as a blank canvas. So you can have your way with them to buy this car. Let's go inside. So this is where I show you exactly how BMW-ish it actually is. The seats are really nice. The seats are really cool. They're really body hugging. BMW owners will recognize these buttons. Memory seats as well, which is good. When you get inside, And it's all for military territory for BMW guys. Okay, okay, I'm stop saying that. I'll stop saying that. Let's start it up. So as you can see, without mentioning the other Bavarian partner, it's actually quite a nice interior. The buttons, soft touch, they feel like they'll last, a, last quite a while. I love the carbon fiber highlights over here. I drive, yeah, it's, tried and, it's a tried and tested system already. So it's not really a bad thing, uh, even though there's a lot of part sharing from the Bavarian parts bin. But if it works, then why not? Okay, and uh, I don't quite like the steering wheel. I think it looks a bit. I don't know. I thought I thought it could. This part here should have been left empty, you know, so that it can stick with the three-spoke. I mean, it is three-spoke right now, but if this part would have been empty, it would be nicer rather than just a plastic. Uh, shifters look cool. And as you can see there, as soon as you put it in gear, it goes D. And if you go into Sport, it, goes, it shows Sport. Um, I did wonder why you need this big empty Sport over here. But then that's where all the warnings come out. You know, uh, let's say if there's a car too close to you, that's where it comes up. Um, so that's sort of like a warning panel. And uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure if you can see this, but uh, let me turn this around. But you can access the boot from here. Which reminds me, I should show you the boot. Let's go. And I'll also show you the the engine. Forgive the boot. It's a bit of a mess with all my equipment right now. Oh, I forgot to open it. So to open the boot, there's this button over here. A bit of a mess. But yeah, uh, it's actually not all that bad, lah. It's uh, big enough for a weekend's getaway. 
you know, Penang, Phuket, whatever. So it's quite it's quite decent. Not too bad. And you could fold this away. Of course you can unplug it and fold it away and it gives you more space. And that's the interior again. You can access the interior from here as well, like I said earlier. Yeah, not too bad. And this is the engine. Straight six, turbocharged. Pretty cool, man. I think it looks really cool from far because the whole bonnet pops up. Look at this. It's like a, it's almost, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But it's almost like the Toyota 2000 GT Which is what the original Supra Actually took cues, styling cues from Pretty cool man Even the daytime running lights See there's 6 LED lights over here Daytime running lights look cool So for what it is, Supra is a really nice car, right? It's a bit unfortunate the price is such, but uh, I think wait a couple years, maybe second-hand car market, Supra will be a pretty good buy. I think I would buy it. Let's take it for a drive again. So I may be rambling about the price, how BMW this, BMW that and uh, you know there are some parts as I pointed out there are some parts about the exterior that just don't do it for me but there's also another way to look at the Supra and that's the fact that Toyota has basically given us a blank canvas right? so a lot of body kits, you know, there's a wide body kit for the Supra available in the market right now. Macha macha la that you can do already with the Supra. There's also uh, tuning kits that I heard take power closer to 600 horsepower. So, of course, if you go down the tuning road, uh, it's, it presents its own sets of challenges. That's a different story, of course. Um, but then again, for what it is, the Supra is a really nice car. I said it, really. I, I do not subscribe to all the negative things that some people tell me, uh, say about the Supra. Um, yes, it has its shortcomings, I agree. But that doesn't make it a bad deal. Just some, perhaps there are some better buys in the market, but of course, better buys is always subjective. What's a better buy for me may not be a better buy for you. And again, for what it is, you're getting you're getting a pretty sweet car. A grand grand tour. If I was the type, you know, that I'm always spending a lot of time on the highway, uh, going to dis distant places, and I want something comfortable, something fast something really fun to drive and I don't want the usual suspects of uh, you know Porsches and such the Supra it, it is sometimes it's usable power 385 horsepower it's not a lot of power I said that earlier but it's usable power you know sometimes too much power is also not really a good thing because where are you going to use 600 horsepower you 550 horsepower where are you going to use all that power Especially on our kind of highway, you get on the you get on the throttle, you get on the accelerator, and maybe about 10 seconds later you'll have to brake away because we got all types of idiots on our roads, and you know most of our highways are dual carriageways anyway. So for what it is, it's a really nice car. I really had fun driving this car, and I really appreciate. Um, 
basic recipe, which is quite a classic recipe. Good looks, uh, quality cabin, usable power, and a lot of good entertainment inside. So, and comfortable, of course. Okay. That's the other thing that I forgot to say uh, about the Supra, is that it's chassis and suspension. It's pinpoint perfect, man. Just look at it. There's a bit of twitch and it's already responding to you and that's not even in sport mode yet also it has adaptive suspension so press this thing the transmission is ready the gears are ready the gearbox is ready the suspension is a bit stiffer already so it's just ready to go how can you not like that huh complain about a car like this looks great and it feels great as well so if you're thinking about buying a supra go for it thank you for watching don't don't forget to subscribe to our channel we we'll bring you more stuff like this thank you